This is a positron thruster, a real concept for an antimatter powered rocket capable of near light speed travel. Before you learn how it works, why use antimatter? Just half a gram of antimatter can store the energy of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb, 18 billion times more energy than chemical rocket fuel. So antimatter rockets can reach much higher speeds than chemical rockets, reducing the travel time to our nearest star from 73,000 years to under 10. Let's now see how it works in six steps. Step one, antimatter storage. If antimatter touches the matter in the container walls, it will explode. Penning traps avoid this by using magnetic fields to trap the positrons in a circular orbit and electric fields to push them to the middle. The antimatter is now confined without any physical contact. A second penning trap uses a similar arrangement to store the normal matter electrons. Both traps use a lot of electrical power to generate the force fields. So with our antimatter safely stored, how do we feed it into the reaction chamber? The electric field is weakened on one side of the trap so that a small amount of antimatter is pushed into the fuel line. A stronger magnetic field around the line tightens the orbit to prevent contact with the line's walls as it drifts toward the reaction chamber. An equal number of electrons is also fed in. So what happens when the matter and the antimatter meet? Step 3. Annihilation. The mass in the matter and the antimatter is converted into pure energy. The mass in less than half a gram of antimatter releases the energy of the Hiroshima nuclear explosion, making antimatter the most energy dense fuel in the universe. The energy is released as pairs of high energy gamma rays, and with a few grams of antimatter annihilating every second, the gamma energy released is enormous. So how do we turn the gamma rays into thrust? Step 4. Parabolic Photon Sail Parabolas are special shapes that focus all horizontal rays to a single focal point. For example, the James Webb Space Telescope focuses light onto a camera to capture detailed images of the universe. Well, our parabolic photon sail works in reverse, redirecting all the gamma rays from a focal point into a perfectly horizontal beam. The pressure from those reflecting photons pushes the craft forward, much like a sail. However, there is one big issue. Gamma rays are so small that they pass through all known materials and can't be reflected by our sail. To reflect, they must be at least 41 times bigger. And this takes us to step 5, Compton scattering. When gamma rays bounce off electrons in atoms, they lose some energy and become bigger. We can make our gamma rays exactly 41 times bigger by passing them through about 37 centimeters of lead. Our gamma rays can now just about be reflected by our sail. However, the gamma rays have lost 98% of their energy to the lead shell, either as heat or as very fast scattered electrons, depending on the shape of the shell. So how can we regain some of this energy as thrust? Step six, energy recovery. If most of the lost energy is heat, we could use it to heat a propellant and fire it out of a nozzle, very much like a traditional rocket. But if most of the energy is lost as scattered electrons, we could use a magnetic field to reflect the electrons backwards and generate thrust. So now we have a fully working positron thruster. But how much antimatter would we need for an interstellar mission to our nearest star system, Alpha Centauri? Let's say our ship has the mass of the International Space Station. We begin accelerating at 1g so that it feels like Earth's gravity for those on board. The acceleration phase uses 700 tons of antimatter, or 16 grams a second, the energy of 42 Hiroshima bombs every second. The ship quickly gains speed as it passes through and leaves the solar system. After 1.3 years, the ship has reached 70% light speed. At these speeds, relativistic effects make things seem weird on board the ship. The universe seems squashed by 29%, objects ahead appear bluer and behind appear redder, and even time slows down. The engines are now switched off and we coast along at 70% light speed. This phase lasts about five and a half years for those on Earth, but due to time dilation, only four years passes for those on the ship. Finally, the ship flips around and begins decelerating, again at 1g, but this time only using 290 tons of antimatter, or seven grams per second. After eight years on Earth, or six on board the ship, we finally enter the Alpha Centauri system and come to rest. In total, we've used a million kilograms of antimatter. This much antimatter would currently cost $250 quintillion, and due to extreme electrostatic repulsion, would be nearly impossible to store. But there is an antimatter thruster which addresses this issue, the pion thruster. Thank you for watching. 
Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos.